familiar thing. All right, Tristan. No, nobody knows who I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> welcome to the Crash Course to Webcomics panel, or Breaking into Webcomics panel. This panel is all about if... I can't project. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about uh, getting into the webcomics Sorry, industry. Yeah. This is not really like a, this is not a how to draw sort of course. So we're going to go over uh, some information. I got some outlines. But also, if you have some questions, uh, feel free to raise your hands and uh, we will answer them to the best of our knowledge or the worst of our knowledge. Try to please keep them towards uh, create, starting your own webcomic, not so much art. Stuff because I'll be covering other panels. So yeah. Well, actually, if you go back in time, like an hour and a half ago, we had a whole panel about that. I did record it, and we'll put it online in case um, you missed we it. We should probably introduce ourselves again because I think this is actually a surprisingly different crowd it, than the yeah, one we just actually, had the previous so show. So way over here on the on your right, <laughs> I am Lee. I draw the web comic Godseeker that uh, Twilight Sparkle here in the front writes. Um, although it's not listed as Twilight Sparkle as the author on the web page. But uh, we have been posting for... Since 2000. Well, this particular iteration was 2008. Yeah, since 2008 um, slash one year before that, before I nuked out my archive. Um, my name is Randall Milholland. I draw a comic called Something Positive at somethingpositive.net. I've been doing it since late 2001. Uh, it's a comic about dick jokes. There you go. <laughs> no, 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 the magic. I always need to get more of those in our comments. You really need to. They, We're going to. People right? people love a good penis joke, especially a good penis stab joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are no kids in here, right? No. Oh, fucking awesome. I can swear. <laughs> uh, I'm Fess. I, I, I have my own uh, hobby comic that's I officially put on indefinite hiatus. Um, another one called Ardra. Um, that I've been really liking and, and uh, actually came on as an interim artist, stayed on as an editor, and then now I'm co-writing it. Now I'm majority owner of it. But I also do a podca uh, podcast. It's been all about webcomics since 2007 called the Webcomic Beacon. And, uh, wow, tons of information over there if you'd like to go check that out. And uh, this is one thing that I, uh, I've been doing this panel for like at least three years. And what it's an amalgamation, what it originally was an amalgamation of my own experiences, but also all the interviews of various web cartoonists that I've had on the podcast over the years. And I've made it so there's more Q&A. And I have extra panelists on this show. And oh, we're extra. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Other than me. Let's see how it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, let, let's see here who, who already has a web comic going. Okay. All right, besides you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> okay. One person. One person. Who actually <laughs> wants to start a web comic? Oh, look at him. Awesome. Oh, that's good. That's, that's nice. Exciting. Let's break that now. Let's end that problem. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's end that problem. <laughs> uh, crush your dreams. <laughs> as I was talking with Randy earlier, one thing I like to start out with is like, ask why you want to do this uh, web comic. Do you want to do this for fun or do you want to try to do it as a profession? Very important thing to figure out first. Because I started my hobby comic way back when. It's like, oh, I'm going to do this stupid thing. And uh, then I started actually really liking it. And now it's a complete mess because I kept updating it and it's so terrible. But I love it still. But it is absolutely worthless as far as trying to market it to most people. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this is depressing. No, this, this is, this is, you don't start off with like, oh, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. That's not, if you really want to be yeah. professional, it's like, I really want to like get myself out there. I would say, even if you're starting your webcomic as a hobby, having a potential business plan is mm -hmm. not a bad thing. Okay. Worst happens is you don't do it. Um, I, <laughs> you know, he's like, oh, okay, we'll never take that away. Whatever, it's still fun. I still enjoy doing it. I, I started my comic as a way to kill time between acting jobs because I was do I was making a living off acting for a while. But I know people like John Rosenberg of Scenes from Multiverse. He used to do a comic called Goats. And Scott Kurtz of PVP, when they started their stuff, they actually had business plans set up of how they wanted to go, how far they needed to be by a certain point in time. And it's not a bad thing to do. And, you know, figure out not just your stories, like, you know, where do you want the comic to be, you know, story-wise or plot-wise or just joke-wise within so many years, but where you want to be with it, like... Do I want to be doing merchandise at a certain point? Do I want to be doing advertising? By the way, you do not start off selling. Well, you can start off advertising and selling merch. You just won't make money at the start of it. I actually, I will say, we 
threw up a Project Wonderful. People know what Project Wonderful is. Yeah. Oh, what? Hold up. We have a question. Maybe we should take the question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Question. Yeah, I'm sorry. How do you start your comics? Do you just start them as simple comedy panels and then go into comics, or oh what wow, would be the easiest way to start one? You guys, you're gonna get a completely different set of answers here. Um, yeah. Uh, which is which is good. Which is representative, I think. Yeah. Um, we have an outline for a 500 page comic, and we have a style bible, and everything was mapped out before I set pencil to paper drawing. Yeah. Um. But that's me. <laughs> My comic is more of a gag. I mean, it has ongoing storylines in it uh, and plot development, but it was first and foremost meant to be comedy. So I kind of sat down, like, I want to do a comedy comic. I need to figure out the core cast, their personalities, where they'll be going in the next 10 years. Because I had a 10 year plan originally. Um, it's been going for almost 12 years now. And it started off like I did. The bulk of, I think the first few months of my comic was like, nothing but comedy. Just mm -hmm. goofy, fun, harsh jokes, get them out there. <laughs> and I think, actually, you know, the first time I did anything remotely serious in my comic was 11 months in. Um, so I let it progress slowly. I'm a big fan of slow progression with comics and storylines. I have storylines that were cooking. Like, I did one that was a parody of, of zombie movies, but involved <laughs> a convention with cat girls. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And I was setting that up quietly in the background of my comic for three years. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, hey, here it is. And no one knew how to handle it. Because, like, what the? Cat girls are pulling people's faces off. It doesn't usually <laughs> happen in this comic. <laughs> but, um. I think having a plan, though, for where you're going. Having a plan, like, a story wise, is a phenomenal thing. I, I have a yearly plan. I start with a 10 year plan, but every year I look at it, revise it, because certain things just don't work anymore. Certain characters go their own way. And then when I got to year 10, I did a six-year plan on top of that. Um, but yeah, it's it's a good way to do kind of sit down. Like, if you're doing predominantly comedy, go straight to the jokes. Have fun. Set the tone right off the bat, yeah. whatever you're doing. I Sorry, I haven't, I haven't gotten you, you talk yet. I feel kind of bad. <laughs> but I will say one more thing. Uh, if you're your first comic, this is just kind of a nitpick thing. Don't I don't care if it's a an action superhero comic or drama or comedy don't have your first trip be this is the main cast no. hi i'm the court and you should like this person no do not do that <laughs> that's one of my rules actually yeah oh don't that, break the fourth wall in the first panel or the uh, first strip yeah. so many people have done the comic hi i'm the main character in the new comic oops forgot to do first comic oh my god it's terrible <laughs> you should be beaten on the soles of your feet <laughs> with a sock full of wood screws if you do that. Oh, I will point out there is an exception. If your whole comic is supposed to be is supposed to be meta humor yeah. and breaking yeah. the fourth, that's completely different. But but be aware, everyone else has done it before you, so you better be really damn funny. Garfield yeah. did it the very first strip. In fact, there's a comic called Two Lumps, which is about two Prussian blue cats. And the first strip was a parody of the first Garfield strip, where the main character is doing that, and then the two cats attack him, beat the shit out of him. I love how you this. always specify that it's two Prussian blue cats. Because <laughs> it's it's that's the whole point. Those two awful little cats, which is redundant, I know. Um, but it, it's it's a good idea to sit down and just kind of figure out, make your first strip, kind of have your characters tell who they are through action, how they present themselves through their dialogue. Or how they deal with the situation. Yeah. yeah. Introduce the story slowly. Introduce the story, well, overall, like, the actual plot line, but have the characters introduce themselves... Naturally. Naturally. Like, okay. like as I observe, if you're dropped into a room, and you have, a, see, there's a party going on, and you're watching all these people, they don't walk in different, like, hello, my name is so-and-so, every time they talk. Like, assume they're all friends, they're going to be talking to each other, and you can dissect... Who is who by how they treat each other, how they talk, how they interact, how they don't interact, how they what they how they dress even. It's it's a much more interesting, compelling way of having the readers get to know the characters if it's in a way they would actually get to know a person. Um, and, and it's more. Otherwise, it feels like you're set up on a on a like a internet blind date with them. Like here's the profile of this. Person, okay, Cupid the comic. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. I mean, that's all good information. <laughs> you really it's want not, to stick to that damn outline. I was waiting for to say, you're wrong, I, but... No, I'm just going to say, it's, it's, it's like, I want to get to more of the actual... He has an outline. I'm, I'm only loosely going over it. 
<laughs> but so if you are wanting one. to get into web comics, you know, there's a couple of things that you are going to need to figure out. Um, other than figuring out what you want to actually do in your comic, you need to figure out where you're going to go. Where are you going to get hosting? Yeah. What are you going to pick for your, your, your comic name, so, Google names uh, to make sure titles. that something's not already titles. taken? Uh, you want a URL. You always want a URL, even if you were doing something for fun, because sometimes it might just get really big and you don't want to be at comichosting.com slash my comic. And, you know, you can start off. Domains are cheap. You can spend. I would actually, we did pretty well starting off at uh, Comic Genesis. But it's still when you make that jump, and then people are have their old link that doesn't get updated. You know, if, it's just one less. If you headache. can afford it and feel like dropping the money, if you have ten bucks for one year, well, no, plus your hosting, plus the hosting, because you can get free hosting. We started that way, right? But you can make your domain name redirect to your Comic Genesis or wherever yeah, free sure. hosting yeah. site. Most free, even, t- if you, even if you use Tumblr as your hosting, you can Don't have a domain. Don't use Tumblr as your hosting. Well, I'm not <laughs> saying... Hey, some, I've seen some comics that should yeah. do well. Yeah. It is possible. It is possible, but it, it makes reading your archive a real bitch and a half. I'm not arguing that point. I agree. I've actually seen people that have wrangled the code in such a way that I didn't realize it was a Tumblr. If, if you know how to handle that uh, Tumblr's code yeah. and, and set your own... <laughs> And, and bless your yeah. heart if you know how to do that. That's impressive yeah. to me. There's there's plenty of free free webcomic. You type in free webcomic hosting. You'll get a whole bunch. Um, Comic Genesis, Drunk Duck, yeah. Webcomics Nation, which is by Joey Manley. He used to do. Uh, he still does Modern Tales. And that's probably, I think, one of the three Smack free ones. Jeeves. Smack, Smack Jeeves. Jeeves, yeah. I will also point out, though, if you get free hosting of any form, you get what you pay for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You cannot... There was a point in time when Comic Genesis was down for a very long time, and they didn't there have were multiple times in which Comic Genesis <laughs> was down for a very long time. And they, you know, Absolutely. or the, it could take them months to get to your problem. Well, yeah, they're, you're not the high priority. I mean, they right. make money off your site because of ads, right? But you don't pay for it. Whereas I have never, like, until I uh, became a member of Blind Ferret, I never had free hosting. I was paid for it. Right. Sometimes I paid out my nose for it. I used to be paying back when. It to get a um, a dedicated server was very expensive. I was paying six hundred and fifty dollars a month oh, for my hosting. Most people starting out will will be able to get away with one of those cheap. Yeah, classes. I pay eighty dollars a year. Yeah, well, I was in a situation where my audience were quite, like I needed the dedicated hosting. Mm-hmm. When I started off, I had a ten dollar a month account on a. a a web host that doesn't exist anymore, sadly, called Illuminati Online, which is the <laughs> coolest name for a host ever. Mine is Fat Cow. <laughs> yep. Uh, HostGator, I've heard lots of good things about. <laughs> Stay away from DreamHost is what I hear from everybody. DreamHost used to be really good, and if you were there early and grandfathered into their old pricing scheme, it's great. And since then, everyone knows who's ever been on DreamHost has been... So, what can I move to now? <laughs> you like Fat yeah. Cow. But this thing, if you're going for a web host... There are web forums about that review host. Read the reviews. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, okay. I'd be highly skeptical of those. Take every review with a grain of salt. Because some people are going to bitch for the fun of bitching. Mm-hmm. And you can usually read, like, wow, this is someone who honestly did a bunch of stupid crap on their own, and they're mad. But if you go through a forum and you see, like, it's a, oh, look, here's this post I'm looking at. Five pages of reviews, and it's all like, no, seriously, these people don't know what they're doing. There's probably a good chance they're right. Um, I used to have a host called Burton Hosting. It doesn't exist anymore for an amazing reason. (laughs) They started off really great, and then the last year they were in existence, they just kind of vanished. They were still collecting money. They weren't replying to any... You called their tech support, and they went to an answering service. Uh huh. <laughs> At that point, I was like, "Well, I'm done. I'm moving out." And it was really like it went from these form reviews of because most people who actually like a, a web host or are happy will give you a good review of it or honest. And it was you know just very much like if someone can actually detail all the problems, like you know, no one answers the tech support calls. Turnaround time is this long. Da da da. But take a grain of salt. Um, also, understand how much you can afford to pay and how much you need. Yeah. I mean, I okay. When you start your webcomic, have real try to get realistic expectations of what your readership is going to be like off the bat. No one will care about you until you have at least 100 pages. Okay, I'm sorry, no one will care. Unless you're already coming from another really popular project. I mean, yeah, okay, if you already lack a daisy. I had 40,000 readers in two weeks. Just saying. 
I, 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 I got linked by Penny Arcade okay. in my second or week of a comic. Or you get linked by Penny Arcade. Yeah. <laughs> I, Penny Arcade or Mega Tokyo or yeah. yeah. I, I will. I will. Uh, most of the time, it takes a long time to build a readership. It doesn't happen which overnight. Which means you don't need to be paying for ridiculous quantities of. of yeah. Honestly, a fifteen twenty dollar a month account somewhere is enough. Yeah. When yeah. you're starting off. Actually, if you're starting out, even the four or five dollars a month, the the I can't even find the eighty bucks a year. Post skater. Yeah. 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 Um, but, but learn their policies. Yeah. Find out like because you may get links by a really big site. Like yeah. it could be a BuzzFeed something, and find out what their policies on data overage are. Yeah. So do they? If you go over your bandwidth for the month, do they just shut you down? Or do they charge you an overage fee? Find out what that overage fee is. <laughs> unlimited does not mean unlimited when you see it. It's called shared hosting. You're on a hosting site with a bunch of other people. If you are starting to hog the resources, you will get shut down. And if you start to hog the resources, you will probably need to upgrade. So. And actually find out if they do upgrade packages and how easy it yeah. is to upgrade. A lot of people will. Yeah. Yeah. Usually uh, if you want to give them more money. Than yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will also say this, and I learned this the fun way That's my second year of my comic. I had to move to a new host because <laughs> my first host was Illuminati Online, then I got a lot of readership, so I moved to a small company called Web Slum. I was 95% of their traffic. <laughs> and uh, then... I crippled their servers one day and like you have to find a new home. We're very sorry. <laughs> Which I understood you that got was kicked out of the slum. I know. I was very <laughs> I was very proud of myself. Um, so I, I went to a company called Speakeasy. Speakeasy's still around. I kept all I believe in keeping emails. Emails are oral contracts and they stand up in court. So I got one of their business plans, and I said, I need access to my raw logs, and I need to be able to put, keep my auto-update script going. And in the email, I was told, yes, we can do this. I set up my site. I agreed to a one-year package. I go look for these things. I say, where are they? Oh, you don't have access to that. Why don't you? Oh, we don't give anyone that. You told me I could. Yeah, we need their information. All right, well, then I'm leaving. Well, that's a dismissal fee. At which point, I had a lawyer contact them explaining, no, he signed that contract under these pretenses, which the specific salesperson had given me. Suddenly, I'm getting a lot more attention. <laughs> um, having that stuff, in, whenever you're dealing with vendors, web hosts, anyone, having that information. It's like when you're dealing with a mechanic, get in writing so you have a guarantee. Have it in writing. And don't, like, lord over them, but you're just to have it. Uh, even if you have to screen cap a, a Yahoo chat, but don't do your business negotiation. I know people have done that, it's, but still, email is a good way to keep track of things. That Nobody should use Yahoo. Yeah, she's, like, I'm so sorry. Ten minutes. Um, for people with, like, a very, very tight budget, is it... Okay to like run your web comic on a website like DeviantArt. Uh, the question is, if you are on a budget, should I make my comic on DeviantArt? The answer is never make your comic on DeviantArt. It is a pain in the butt if you actually really want to make a continuing web. I'm Honestly. actually going to disagree with you. Really? I am actually going to disagree with you because there are comics I follow now that I found on DeviantArt back so in the basic. days. Yes. Yes. Dance yes. is going. Um, oh. However, it, it was, here's like 15 pages on DeviantArt, and then they wound up moving to a, a different site. Now, that only worked for them, though, because they were already very popular on DeviantArt. So when they made the switch over, they had a readership built up already and could put <coughs> ads on their website, and that was how they were helping to pay for their hosting. Okay. So, yes, it was on DeviantArt, but it didn't stay on DeviantArt, and Archive they kind of got away with it terrible. because yeah. they were already popular on DeviantArt. If you're popular on some social media, you know, by all means, use that. Yeah, yeah. If you have 3,000 Tumblr, Tumblr followers, you know, I hate Tumblr, but yeah, throw comics up there on Tumblr if you've got a bunch of Tumblr followers. The problem comes into navigation, yeah. and then trying to find and then read them in the row, and then you got to click on them. It's a pain in the butt once you start getting... A lot of, of, of comics. <laughs> but if I, I, I gotta say, if you just want a website to have your comics just on and you don't have like any sort of like you know established fan base for your art anywhere, drunk duck, you sign up one minute, you got a website. It's very basic, but 
boom, you're there. I would say even Webcomics Nation, because that was mm-hmm. geared towards, it has free versions and pay, like, it's, it has built-in tools, like, okay, which one adds, cool, here's your built-in tool. But, I mean, honestly, if you're looking, like, you're worried about freedom, there are countless free sites that, you know, yes, again, they'll have, they'll have problems, but so will DeviantArt. Yeah. Uh, DeviantArt also has a lot of policy changes. You never know what will happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I have very minimal experience with DeviantArt, but you know, honestly, if in that case, get a bunch of different sites from different free services, play with them, see which one you like, and the one you like, that's the one you stick with. If it's free, why the hell not? They're not going to make you only use them. And if they're trying that, don't deal with yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and even if they're to pull that shit, they're telling you that you need to go away. <laughs> and if anybody comes to you and says, hey, we'd like to host your comic, uh, there's a few sites out there. I'm not going to actually name them. Uh, you can go. ask me after the show, after this episode. I have this, no regrets. I'm just saying. I, I, will give you, <laughs> I, I will feel give like I'm later in this no. weird, like, observer to something that happened long ago. <laughs> you always read the terms. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. there's some places that are like, you have to go through us if you want to do X merchandise, which if you yeah. sign up with us, we have we take X percent of this or that. Make sure that what you're getting out of it is what you can deal with and what they're, you know, always read everything and understand that if you just do it yourself, in a lot of cases, you can do it yourself. Um, and nice get a, thing to it's know. It's possible. A lot of cities, Minneapolis and St. Paul included, have access, if you're poor, and an artist that you can go, there's some day a month where you can go and talk to a lawyer for free. Yep. If you have a big old scary contract and big old scary legalese and you want someone to look at it, find out in your city, wherever you live, if you have that and show up <clears throat> because it's free. It's a resource that's there for you. And that's true for anything, for merchandise. Mm-hmm. Yep. I have heard so many tales of horror <laughs> from cartoonists and not like just people doing web comics just comic books in general over the years where they they signed a contract and it was a screw job but like oh well i got i was gonna get you know this people behind me yeah but you don't have any to show for it um i know cartoonists who have had you know their properties turned to you know blockbuster movies they got nothing out of it because they didn't read the contract they were signing or you'll get net in the movie mm-hmm. industry, net doesn't exist because it's what's left over after you know expenses are paid. Well, that money gets reinvested, so there was technically no net. Marvel Comics tried to argue in court they owed Stan Lee no money from the first two Spider-Man movies because they hadn't made anything. Because, like, well, there's no net. We reinvested it. And one of the few times ever a judge said, bullshit, you owe him money, I'm not stupid. But usually they get away with it. Um, I actually have had four or five contracts I have been offered. One was for hosting in the first year of my comic. And it was, like, a, a weird indie syndicate that didn't stick around. And it was pretty much like they would own my property and could fire me from it and have someone else draw it. And I was like, well, I guess I'm not signing that shit. Yeah. <laughs> we got that guy over there. Oh, yeah. Blue shirt yeah. Has hands. Uh, you were talking about Project Wonderful, and I was saying you should probably, like, talk about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We meant to. Oh, know. Project Wonderful. It is, it's wonder- wonderful. It is. <laughs> it is basically thing. a bid for ad space. Um, anybody can sign up for an account and start bidding on websites that have uh, the Project Wonderful thing on their site. To put their own ad up there, it makes it very accessible for like lower traffic people to afford some uh, advertisement, as well as low tra- lower traffic people yeah. to get some advertisement, and it, and it really pays off thinking. more so if you got a lot more traffic. But if, even if you don't have a lot, I mean, my comic is kind of niche. Um, I get enough off my ads <coughs> to pay for the stuff I need for my web comic. So I'm not making big boatloads of money off my comic, but it doesn't drain my finances mm. either. It's also a really good way for promotion. Yeah. There are people like Dave Willis who know how to use Project Wonderful like it's a, a finely tuned instrument. <laughs> they can tell you, like, they go in, they bid on specific hour sets when the mm-hmm. traffic is the highest, and they will pump these high bids, like, $200 a day, got my hour, cancel my bid, thank you, and move on. Um, it's like it's almost like playing the stocks. It is very much a weird. It's web comic gambling in yeah. a way. Yeah. But I mean, they also you can find sites by genre. I'm sorry, I'm going to do the tackiest thing in the world here. I'm starving. 
<laughs> who, who honestly fucking cares? Starving artist. Um, and we're all at convention. I'm sure there are way worse things you could be doing in front of these people right now. Um, I, and your mind went to it went. I, I was being innocent. Um, but you, know, you can actually, like, say you're doing, uh, my comic is about horror. Well, I can go, you can go through Project Wonderful if you want to, like, promote it. You might want to advertise on sites that are similar. Or if you have comedy in your horror, cool. Uh, what com- what What's in their comedy in their horror categories? All right, what well, has the most traffic? That's what I'll go advertise on, and that will give you access to audiences. It's a good form of promotion. Hmm. One thing I... Go ahead. Uh, sorry, I'm going to get actually off Project Wonderful. Though, so no, I got one more Project Wonderful. Thing. You do that first, then. Uh, one thing that I do whenever I make, like, ad campaigns, I go and step ad campaigns. So you can, like... Like mm-hmm. look for as like I want to look for traffic that has unique visitors that are between fifty and hundred visitors in a week, and then I'll run a camp, uh, run a search for that, and then put like a minimal bid and all these little tiny little bids just to get the, like the low traffic sites, just to kind of get my face out there for those ones. And I'll go like now I want a hundred to five hundred, and then five hundred to a thousand, and I'll make steps so I have my very controlled, very minute amount, so so I'm not accidentally bidding high on the low traffic sites and things like that and i usually can get a pretty decent turnaround and then you're kind of like on a like a, like if i'm doing a web comic podcast i'm actually advertising to those new uh web cartoonists mostly not to their audience but mostly to them to check my stuff out but there are ways you can really find angle so one more project for the all sorry <laughs> uh, project wonderful uh was created by ryan north who does dinosaur comics? Now, Grant, that. yeah, Project yep. Wonderful is not only for web comics. I know people who've had them on blogs and else, but so it is a well, it wasn't created just for web comics. It's created for anything. It is a tool that is very much attentive to the needs of web comics. Mm-hmm. And Ryan North plugs is, right into com- to comic press. Plugs yeah. right into comic so press. It you is, don't need to know jack and shit. It is a very comics. easy thing to use, and unlike things like. Google Ads, you have control of what goes on your site. You can always have it where it's just like, I you, people want to bid my site, if they get a winning bid, it goes straight up. I don't do that because I have had things that people try to put on my site I didn't appreciate. Some were very homophobic. I got I, Russian brides one time. I can mail order brides. Um, I actually have it where I have to approve every ad on my site. And I actually do. And I've gotten many viruses from that. But my mm-hmm. readership didn't get those viruses. And that didn't hurt my readership. Taking one from the sheet. Yes. Nice. What? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Once you start actually getting traffic, I mean, like, Randy Mulholland tra- started traffic, you can actually, like, switch to, like, sort of, like, like Google Ads or some higher... I had services. no look at Google Ads. I know. Or I, just like, like, but you can you can do better than Project Wonderful if you really got. So I will say traffic. for me, Project Wonderful has been one of the best. Now I'm not really. Yeah, uh, I know Howard Taylor people and uh, has you always loved like Google Ads and other companies. But for me, Project Wonderful, I've tried those other companies and I had no success hmm. with them. In fact, at one point, uh, I had Google Ads on my site. I gave it a try, and uh, it was like seven million page views in a month. And I have an audience around 200,000. I got $3. Fuck you, Google. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, Yeah, I wanted to talk about um, Twitter. Let me talk about (gasps) Twitter. (laughs) <laughs> that was a lot of excitement <laughs> 140 characters um, so Like I said, my, my comic is kind of niche I'm not I'm not a huge name in web comics I have a small but rabid fan base but, They're smarter um, than us Yeah, there's like a freakish number of You seem disappointed by that, that It's intimidating, like, they'll be like, oh, I can see that you're referencing This archaeological dig from blah 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 And I'm like, yes. yeah <laughs> <laughs> Um but I have to say that the best thing that I have done for web comics was getting a Twitter account. And I resisted it, you guys. I fought. I had people trying to get me a Twitter account. I'm like, that's stupid. No one cares it, what I had for I breakfast. I thought it was stupid the first time I saw it. It was too. so dumb. And I was like, man, I'm like, fine, I'll get a stupid Twitter account. I got one. And now I would say that most of what I learn about web comics, I learn on Twitter. Because for some godforsaken reason, almost everyone who does a web comic has a Twitter account. And I follow them. And slowly, a lot of them started to follow me. Um, and now, when I have a question about web comics, I go on my Twitter and say, hey, "Hey guys, who do I get for hosting?" Or, "Hey, Comic Press is doing this weird thing. How do I make it stop?" Or, 
um, you know, who wants to do a guest comic on my on my page? And Twitter is where all of those people are. So Twitter is where I find the people who have been helping me because a lot of my friends who do comics don't necessarily do web comics. So having that community that I'm a part of on Twitter um, has, has really saved my buns a few times because there's always someone out there who knows what I don't know, and people love telling you the stuff that you don't know. <laughs> people love to save you if you're if you're going on there and being like, help, I'm stupid and I don't know what I'm doing. They love that. Because um, they've been through it too, yeah. and they wanted someone to help them. It's a very supportive community, I would say, most of the time. 99% yeah, of people there's, are good. There's a few yeah. dicks, but most people there are super helpful, and then I wind up networking with those people, mm -hmm. and suddenly, oh, that's interesting, now I'm getting traffic from E.K. Weaver's comic, and oh, hey, now her reader, she knows me, she read my comic, now she put a link for my comic mm -hmm. on her webpage, which I don't ask people to do, because that's considered tacky a lot of the time. Never, ever ask to do a link swap with anybody. Yeah. Unless, unless you know them very well. Like, you know them very well, and you've already had conversations with that person where they mentioned that you guys have a major overlap in readership. Like, that's even, the only time I would bring that up. Even though I, I, I say, sorry, I don't do link swaps on yeah. my links page, I still have gotten emails. Like, I don't know you. Yeah. And it's kind of rude just to come up and ask, because I don't know well, you. Well, it's also uncomfortable, because I've had to walk up like, hey, you should get, promote my comic. I'm like, I'll look at it, and I'm like, this is a piece of shit. But you should yeah. be like, I have I have ad space on my I website. actually, I, 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 if someone is, if someone's rude about it, and I've had more than, like, well, you've got enough readership, you should be sharing it. Well, then, please, <laughs> by all means, bid on my Project Warhol ad space. That Otherwise, me, now that we've been on this panel, you're going to put a link to my Of comic. course, yes, of course. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Never read! No. Uh, but back to Twitter, um, for me, I started using it in 2008. Uh, I didn't care. The first year, I think I posted, like, tweeted, like, for the first month, I'm lost interest. And then a year later, I picked it up again. And it is a major tool for promoting my comic. Mm -hmm. um, I Every time I do a new strip, I put the links on Twitter. And if people like it, they'll favorite it or they'll retweet it. Yep. And you can get a comic retweeted over and over. I actually, I know some people hate Facebook, but it has actually been useful for me in the same way. Not quite to the same extent, but it, you know, social media is a very useful thing. Mm -hmm. And people who can use it and use it well have reach. Okay. Um, I will say also, <laughs> it can also screw you over oh, I was just gonna if say. you get on twitter and have a total meltdown temper tantrum that can be retweeted everywhere and, and it's been like you know recorded by the library of congress you're yes. never getting that off if, every, if, anything is, if anything's on your twitter account for more than two minutes it's permanently recorded um we can, yeah. we can actually talk more about like social media and our uh, uh the business side of making comics well i just want to uh, say one thing about for starting web comics because before you even start you need to be aware that who you are online is going to impact your comic mm -hmm. success. Mm -hmm. Be aware of that, like, the first day you get that Twitter account. Be careful about what you say, what you do. Think before you speak. I, in the last five years, I have taken my personal life pretty much completely offline. Because I had readers who decided we were very close friends and could comment on things that were not their business. Things I hadn't even necessarily said, like, on a, a comic form or anything. But they were seeking me out, like, my private Facebook or whatever, which I don't longer no have a private Facebook because, eh. And um, <laughs> you have awkward moments like, oh, you just went through a really bad breakup and someone walked into a convention wanting to talk to you about it. I don't want to fucking talk to you about my <laughs> private breakup. Not your damn business. Not that you have to do with that. I've, I've, again, I'm not so popular. Part of how I network on Twitter is being very open with my personal life. However, I'm not half as open as I seem. It looks like I'm sharing everything. Yeah. In fact, I'm editing a lot of it very, very heavily. The internet knows I had a, a botched surgery two years ago. They don't need to know the symptoms of that. <laughs> yeah. um, they don't need to know how long it lasted or how much it cost or anything like that. So it, the information might be there because the internet circles I run in tend to be very personable. Mm -hmm. And that's how I sort of built up those relationships to people who I've, I've never met in real life. I talk with E.K. Weaver online constantly, but I've never met her. She's so cool. She's a wonderful... E.K. <laughs> and her husband, Brett, are wonderful people. They're awesome. 